Welcome to Shrimp Coverlet, where literature lives. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion that comes to us from the wicked ways of Sylvia Plath. This is a poetry discussion, of course, that will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one being the poetry discussion playlist, but number two being a poem by poem read along of the big yellow book from Sylvia Plath. This will be, by the way, if I can find it real quick, the 35th entry into the read-along of Sylvia Plath. So buy your book of Sylvia Plath. I'm going to try to remember to have a link to Sylvia Plath's big yellow book in the description or wherever it is that that goes here on YouTube. And yes, I will make a, a small commission, I think, if you buy the book from that link, I don't know. I've never sold anything through there. This is a new practice to me. But the poem in question today is especially devious. The poem in question today is known as Spinster. The poem in question today hurt me. It, look, I guess I'm kind of the male equivalent of a spinster, but it's not the term spinster or being a male spinster, that hurt. The hurt from this poem is Sylvia Plath was what is known as a confessionalist poetry. You could, you could very easily make the case that Sylvia Plath created confessional poetry. Have you ever heard someone else confess to your sin? That's a, that's a special kind of weird. Uh, that is a wild, wild feeling. So I, I go to Starbucks twice a week, and I read these Sylvia Plath poems there. That's where I do the work on these poems and a couple other videos that I do, and a couple other places on the internet that I am to be found. But I was sitting there, and it's 5.30 in the morning, and I am reading a poem that is describing beat for beat my life. Look, I think anyone who is who has um, probably social anxiety, though they've never been diagnosed with anything like that, will recognize themselves in this poem and the feelings that that manifest in those moments where you know what's going on with you, you know something isn't right, and you know exactly how it's going to go for you, and you just paint by numbers anyway, baby. You just go right with the flow the way it has gone a thousand times before in your life. But the poem in question is Spinster, so let's get into it. Now this particular girl, during a ceremonious April walk with her latest suitor, found herself, of a sudden, intolerably struck by the bird's irregular babble and the leaves' litter. By this tumult afflicted, she observed her lover's gestures, unbalanced the air, his gait stray, uneven, through a rank wilderness of fern and flower. She judged petals in disarray, the whole season sloven, how she longed for winter then, scrupulously austere in its order of white and black, ice and rock, each sentiment within border, and heart's frosty discipline, exact as a snowflake. But here, a burgeoning, unruly enough to pitch her five queenly wits into vulgar motley, a treason not to be born. Let idiots reel giddy in bedlam spring. She withdrew neatly, and round her house she set such a barricade of barb and check against mutinous weather as no mere insurgent man could hope to break with curse, fist, threat, or love either. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, 
I will make the argument. I will make the argument now so that we can get back to it. This part of the poem here is in future tense. Let's go back to this first uh, stanza here. Now this particular girl, during a ceremonious April walk with her latest suitor, found herself of a sudden intolerably struck by the bird's irregular babble and the leaves litter. Why? Why did she notice the bird's irregular babble? Why does she notice that? Because she's already withdrawn from the conversation of her walk. Something has set her wrong. And that's all it will take, is a, a moment. A moment of ill fortune. A moment of ill-timed um, self-doubt. And now she's not even in the conversation anymore. She's gone. She's not there. And because she's not there, we'll get into this second stanza. By this tumult afflicted, she obs Now, look. By this tumult afflicted, because of this misfortune, the misfortune is not the irregular babble of the birds. That would be absolutely silly. But in this moment, in this mindset, the particular girl in question is unable to distinguish between the bird's irregular babble and whatever it is that has set her off in her own mind. By this tumult afflicted, she observed her lover's gestures unbalanced the air, his gait stray, uneven through a rank wilderness of fern and flower. She judged petals in disarray, the whole season sloven. She's unhappy in the conversation. She has flipped. She has turned in onto whatever that mechanism is inside of her that 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 reels up this basically it, it seems like an anxiety right and then everything is wrong because this one thing this bird's a regular babble but it's not really that it isn't really that maybe he's said something maybe she has said something that she knows she is um self-conscious about Maybe he has accidentally done one of these minor social faux pas, which uh, people pick up on in the terms of a relationship, right? Maybe a woman passed and he looked at her too long. Maybe he said something that she thought was pointing out that chin that she doesn't, she doesn't like her chin. You know, whatever it is, it is a person retreating into themselves. The, the particular girl in question has retreated into the self. And now, because of that, her lover's gestures are unbalanced. Because of that, the wilderness is not wilderness, it is rank. Because of that, petals are in disarray. Because of that, we are... So, because of whatever it is that's bothering her, her lover is bothering her. And then we zoom out, and the wilderness itself is bothering her. And then we zoom out, and petals on every flower are bothering her. And then we zoom out, and it's the whole season which we find sloven. It's the whole season. It's not just the bird's irregular babble, which it never was. It is everything. The world is on fire. And then we go one step further from that. The whole season isn't Slavin. We're talking about uh, the spring, how she longed for winter then, scrupulously austere in its order of white and black, ice and rock, each sentiment within border, 
and heart's frosty discipline, exact as snowflake. No colors anymore, I want them to turn black. It's not just that the outside world is disorderly. It's not just that the spring is sloven. We are longing for winter. Longed for winter, then. Everything can die. That'll do well. Everything dies outside in the winter, and it's snow and rocks. There's no color. It's white and black. And by the way, they're taking a walk through the woods, supposedly. I mean, right? I don't think we ever really get a, a setting, but we're surrounded by birds. We're surrounded by rank wilderness. We're walking through the woods. How often do you really walk through the woods? In the winter. How often do you walk through the woods when everything is ice and rock? We're not just saying it's got to be cold outside. We're talking about ice and rock. We're talking about snowflakes, baby. Yeah, give me the precipitation. Give me the bad stuff. Give me the cold. Give me the, the ice of the winter. Everything can die. Whatever it was that set our main character off. Everything can die. And that's fine. And we'll be staying inside. Inside, away from each other. But here, a burgeoning unruly enough to pitch her five queenly wits into vulgar motley, a treason not to be born, let idiots reel giddy into bedlam spring. She withdrew neatly. And it's not just that, that I don't fit in spring, right? It's not just that I, the particular girl in question, it's not just that I don't fit in spring and long for everything to die. It's that everything that's going on in spring, look, it's for idiots, bro. Not queenly wit. We're not there for queenly wit. It is vulgar, the spring. Not neat. Neat like the queen's wits. Neat like that particular girl, which brings into question right? This phrase at the beginning of the poem, it, it seemed simple enough at the time. Now, this particular girl, this one right here, this girl, that's what it seemed to be saying at the time. Is the girl in question specific or is the girl in question particular? Is it the girl herself that is staring out in particular fashion? I am particular. I only like X, Y, and Z. Right? Um, so we get through all of this, and everything is wrong. And it's not just wrong. It's wrong because you're all idiots, and I'm the queen who will withdraw neatly. And then, and round her house she set such a barricade of barb and check against mutinous weather as no mere insurgent man could hope to break with curse, fist, threat, or love either. My argument is, this part of the poem is already done. The moment this happens, the moment this happens, the moment that intolerability had struck, her entire season is over. Because that's how it happens. When you're spiraling like this, 
So, I mean, just spiral, right? You've got a spiral that goes down. The moment you go off on this inception, the moment that first curve is taken on that spiral, you're already at the bottom. You don't have the choice. She's in her house setting up barricades, not only so that no one can get in, but if no one's getting in, you're not getting out either. And possibly the worst part, right? We can we can take the most um, we can take the most generous assumption here. We can say, you know that meme where it's the guy looking back at the other girl and his girlfriend is beside him looking angry and it's like um, the you the book you're reading and then the book you just bought, right? And you're cheating on, you're looking at the other book that you just bought while your girlfriend book is beside you. You know that meme. We can pretend, right? Because we have no way to understand. We can pretend, give the most generous interpretation here. That's what happened, right? And that would set anyone off. Anyone off. You see, the, the, your your lover is openly checking someone else out with you, right? We can give that interpretation here. We can allow that. And all of this, that jerk can curse at my door. That jerk can shake his fist. That jerk can punch the door. That jerk can threaten me. He's still a jerk. He's not getting in here. Not with, not with that mindset. But that's not where we stop. We've got this too. Or love either. Or love either. This individual is spiraling. Whatever it is that has set off this particular girl. She is spiraling. And if you've been there, you know. There's no coming back. You will eventually forget how to feel. But numbness, that's rock bottom, right? Not having the anger anymore. You've lost the ability to love. Not having the anger anymore. The numbness to all emotion. That's, that's the bottom, right? If you like what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. There's poetry on the channel every Monday. Uh, for the next while, it will be Sylvia Plath, by the way, if you are looking forward to a read-along for one of the most consequential American poets. Not Emily Dickinson, right? She's not quite Emily Dickinson. We can admit that. We can concede the greatness of Emily Dickinson. Not Charles Bukowski. doesn't speak to my heart quite in the same way. But I think we're hitting a stride here with Sylvia Plath. And this one really kicks you in the pants. So that's all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, Consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more literary goodness in the future. And as always, I hope to have you back for the next one.